how to create textured backgrounds for food photography. What's up YouTube and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy and on this channel I discuss everything to do with food photography. So if this interests you, click subscribe down below. In this video, I'm going to be going through how I create my textured food photography backgrounds. So these are the ones that I've kind of got a little bit of a rough texture and they're not just flat and painted. I get quite a lot of questions on my Instagram and in my videos about how I create some of these backgrounds so I thought definitely a good idea to show you guys. These backgrounds are super easy to make and they can really improve your food photography. A lot of the time people always think it's always to do with the props but the background you shoot your food on is definitely one of the most important things in setting up an image. Another great thing about creating your own food photography backgrounds is that every single one of them is going to be unique. You can't even, even if you tried, you couldn't make two backgrounds exactly the same. First thing you're going to need for this background is a big sheet of wood. It doesn't matter what kind of would you choose as long as it's thick enough that it's not going to bow when you get it really wet and add a lot of different things. I normally recommend about 8 to 12 millimeters, and as for size I'd recommend 4 by 3. These are I think are 4 by 4 but that's just because of the size of the board and it got chopped in half. The next thing you're going to need is some joint compound or filler. You definitely do not need a tub as big as the one I've got. That's still two thirds full and I've used it on about six or seven different backgrounds now. You can get this from any sort of home DIY building shop, just like a dot B&Q home base, that sort of thing. I'm not sure in America, but I will try and find some similar links to things on Amazon so you can click it down below. The next is putty knives or spatulas, so they come in various different sizes. If this is your first board, I'd recommend starting with something a little kind of medium size like these two. Something too small is going to be really tricky for you to get it on the board and fill your board up. But something too big is going to make the texture a lot sort of wider and it might smooth it out quite a bit more. So a medium sized one is a really good starting point. If you get a selection like I do, you can always change it halfway through if it's not giving you the desired outcome. The next thing you're going to need is paint. So I'm just using white paint for this one. So make sure it's matte. I'm just going for a completely plain white look to this board because this is going to be the first part in a three part series on light and airy food photography. Just because I'm using white does that mean that you have to go for a simple look? As you can see this is some of my previous boards, it works with so many different colour patterns and textures. If you want more tips on the painting of the boards after watching this texture video, check out some of these videos I've got up here. They might give you a bit more inspiration for how you can paint boards differently. I'll also leave them linked in the description box so you've got that link there after watching this video. Now you've got your joint compound, your filler, your paint sorted, you're going to need something to put the paint on. So I'm just using a roller, but you can also use paintbrushes, sponges, everything like that. And then the last thing you're going to need is your is your matte sealer. This is what I finish all of my boards with and this allows me to wipe them down after using them. It stops them staining quite so easily. It's also important to get that sealer in a matte finish so it doesn't leave a shine on your board. Now we've gone through everything you're going to need, let's get making. Firstly, before we actually start doing anything to the board, we need to make sure we're in some clothes that we don't mind getting paint or joint compound on. I mean, I don't think I've worn anything since the beginning of lockdown that I would mind if it got paint on but just something a bit scruffy. And to save our nice carpet, I'm also going to put a sheet down. I live in Scotland and the weather is unpredictable and cold, but ideally we would be doing this outside. If you are like me doing it inside, make sure you've got windows open so you've got some good ventilation. If it is possible for you to do it outside, I would definitely suggest doing it outside. Unfortunately, if I started doing this outside, it would more than likely start raining on me halfway through it, which has happened before. But if you're doing it inside, also try to protect your carpets with some sheets. that look way harder than it needs to but now we've got our sheet down it's time to get everything out and ready that we need to make our board now we've got our board ready our sheet down and all of the things we're going to need to make our board it's time to get started quick tip first if you wear rings especially for these textured boards i definitely recommend taking them off first trying to get the joint compound off your ring between diamonds and things is an absolute nightmare so make sure you put these somewhere safe the first thing we're going to do is get our spatula. 
So here I have various different sizes and if you want more of a less textured smooth look I would go for a bigger one because this means the texture in the board is going to be a bit more spread for something really crazy and full of texture I'd go for a tiny one. This would probably take you a very long time on a big board but if you want a lot of texture sometimes it's just what you've got to do. I'm going to go for this sort of quite small but yeah medium-ish size of spatula. I'm going to be leaving this board white, so what I want is quite a lot of texture going on. If you're using a coloured board or something a little less plain than white, I would go for a little less texture as there's already quite a bit of interest going on and you don't want it to be too distracting. With a white board, the colour is very kind of bland, so you want to make sure the texture really stands out, so I'm adding a little bit more. Now we have our spatula ready, it's time to add some of the joint compound onto the background. If, like mine, it's been sat a while, you'll have to give it a bit of a stir. So, add a big dollop. And just gradually go through and cover the whole board in the compound. Gotta be honest, these ones are definitely the most therapeutic balls to make. This bit can get really fun. As you get going, you'll notice how different movements cause different sort of textures in the board. So you can really get an idea of what you like the most. You can either do up, down movements to kind of have a very uniform texture, yet still slightly random. Or like I'm going to be doing for this board, I want a lot of random texture to give it a lot more interest as, like I mentioned, it's going to stay plain white. There's no real wrong or right way of doing this, so just keep experimenting and figure out exactly what you like in the boards. Pretty much covered. I mean, don't worry too much about the few little corners and things that are a bit trickier to get. We need to have a look at it and make sure there's no areas that you're maybe not too fond of. Maybe areas that look a bit too uniform or areas that are just a bit too busy for what you're going for. Right now, this is starting to dry quite a bit and you'll notice as you go through it, you'll get a few different textures. If you like this, you can sort of mix up the areas you see that you don't like. If you don't want this on your board, either way is fine. I like it on some, dislike it on others. Make sure you get a bit more compound and add that to the board to go over the areas you want to change a little bit. The drying time suggested for this is one to two hours. Honestly, I'd leave it for a little bit longer than that three, four, just because as we add the paint, we don't want to start lifting some of this up if it's still slightly damp. If you can, I would suggest maybe leaving it overnight so you know 100% it's dry. This also gives you a chance to see it dry and gives you the option to add any extra joint compound to areas you don't like before putting on your layers of paint. Now our board is dry and I did leave mine to dry overnight. I came to check it about four or five hours after putting this on and it was still a little bit damp and I was getting tired so I thought I'd deal with it in the morning. It's time to put on the paint. Because I'm just going for a solid colour, I'm also just going to need a roller to put the paint on. It's going to make it a lot quicker. If you were going with something a bit wacky, you'd probably be using a paintbrush or putting some texture into the paint as well, maybe like a sponge. But for this, I'm going with the roller. Don't forget when choosing your paint, you want to make sure it's got a matte finish. This is going to stop you getting any shiny areas on your board. Super simple. Just a case of covering the whole board in paint. Okay, that's the first coat on, and I'm going to do a second coat. I'm going to leave this to dry until it's fully dry to put on a second coat. When painting it, I did notice that you're going to have to make sure you go in all directions because that's going to help get between all of the cracks. Now the board is dry, it's ready to give it a second coat of paint. Now we've got this coat on, just leave it to dry, then we'll be ready to put the matte spray on. The last step for these boards is to just go over the whole board with the matte sealer giving it a really nice even coat. 
Sometimes it's best to give it a second coat, but usually one works quite well. So that is the board completed, and here is how it looks in the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and if any of you guys follow along and then make your own boards, I'd love to see them. So if you could tag me on Instagram at amphotographeruk, and I'd love to share what you make. I absolutely love making these boards. I find them so fun and they're so creative, so I really do hope some of you give it a try. Stay tuned for next week's video, where I'm going to be using this board to create a nice light and airy food photography zine.